So have you, uh, have you ever been editing your photos inside of Photoshop and Lightroom and you double click, see it large on screen and it goes from this to the, all right, next one, saturated, contrasty, and then blah. Surely it can't happen again, but it can. <laughs> it goes from that to again, blah. So what's going on here? That's what we're going to cover inside of this video. Uh, talk a little bit about why this happens, what's going on. And then I want to show you a very easy way. Once you're inside of Lightroom that you can figure out number one, what that good look is, turn it into a preset and then make it very easy to apply to your photos when you do the import. So you're not spending any time on this and you automatically get a better starting place. All right. So, What's the idea? The idea is that your cameras, if you shoot in JPEG, your camera does some processing to the photo. That's what it's gonna show you. Uh, if you shoot in RAW, chances are there's these profiles that are, again, into your camera that are meant for JPEGs, but it'll show you, most of your cameras is still showing you a, a JPEG preview on the back that's that juicier, contrastier version. When you get it onto the computer, that's where you're seeing the actual raw file. So uh, Lightroom and Photoshop discard all of that information and show you just the raw file. So what you were seeing before was you were actually seeing the camera grab the embedded JPEG, but then once it reads the full raw file, that's what it's displaying to, which is why it goes from contrasty to not, because that embedded JPEG is a little contrastier and saturated. So what do we do here? Well, we can go inside of Lightroom and the, the first part of this exercise would be set your camera to RAW and JPEG. Set your camera to RAW and JPEG mode. Take a photo that you'd normally take. If it's landscapes, if it's portraits, whatever. Take a photo that you'd normally take. This is the RAW photo and then the one right next to it is the JPEG. And it, you can see it's a little juicier, it's a little contrastier, it's a little more saturated. Well, we can go into Lightroom when I head over to the, uh, to the develop module. And there's this feature, it's only in Lightroom CC. It was added, I believe it was added last November and it's called Referenced View. So the way Referenced View looks or works is if you look down here in your little toolbar, by the way, if you don't see that toolbar, remember again, you're in the develop module, I just hit the letter T. If you hit T, it goes away. If you hit T again, it comes back. Um, it, sends, it shows right down here, RA. Okay, so that's what Referenced View is. Even if it's the first time you've been there and I'll actually tell you what it does. I got it. So take a look on the left hand side. It says drag and drop a photo from the film strip to set that as a reference. So in this case, I am going to set the saturated photo as the reference. And then on the right hand side, it says, go ahead and basically drag and drop a photo. That's going to be the active photo. The active photo is the one that's going to be responding to any edits that we do right now. So here's our reference. Here's our active. Now we can even hit the, uh, the left-hand side, get a little bit more screen real estate to see these. So what's going on is that on the right-hand side, on the very, very bottom, you have something called camera calibration. And if you look under here, under profile, there's going to be all these different profiles. You won't see this if it's not a raw file, if it's a JPEG, it just says embedded because it's already embedded a profile into it's baked it into that JPEG. You can't change it. All right. But with a raw photo, you can go in here and what Adobe will do is simulate these different camera profiles for your different cameras, which is why when you come in here, this is for my Sony a7R2. Uh, if you come in here with a Nikon or a Canon or something, they could be different, right? They most likely will be different. Some of them will be the same, but some of them, some of them will be different. So what you can do here is click on these profiles and you'll watch this side, the active side change. So there's clear, uh, there's deep, meh, there's landscape. That's pretty close. There's light, which I'm going to guess is not. There's neutral. That's definitely not. There's portrait. It's not going to be portrait. Uh, standard. I know it's not going to be standard as well. A vivid's the only other one that I can think that would actually look pretty close to it. And uh, you can turn that on and off get a you know a little bit before and after there but the idea here is is you can cycle through these and you can figure out which one looks like your referenced view that's what the left side is so you actually compare these right on screen here and say all right let's go to landscape landscape and vivid are, are pretty darn close here i'm thinking that, that that landscape is probably it so i know that whatever my camera is set to i know that it is shooting the jpeg 
or the embedded preview, it's applying that landscape profile to the photo. Okay. So what I can do with this is now go over here onto the left side panels and I can go to my presets. I'll just call this Sony landscape profile check none and all I'm going to do is turn on calibration because that's what that one is right over here. I'm going to hit create. So that just created a preset for me right over here, which is pretty cool. You know, you could, if you wanted to apply it to all your photos in the film strip, you could literally uh, just go down here and shift click to select all those photos. Uh, you could go down here at the bottom and you could turn on sync and, uh, and you could sync that calibration profile to it. But that's kind of thinking after the fact. So what happens if, you know, I don't really want to spend too much time on this. And I know I just went on a landscape photo shoot. I come back. Well, when I go up here to the file menu and I go down to import photos, once I select the photos that I'm about to import, if I go over here on the right hand side and I choose under apply during import, you'll see it shows me develop settings. And if I click inside of there, it's showing me all of my Lightroom presets that came from the develop module. So if I scroll down, it was under mats or user presets. You can see right there, Sony landscape profile. So now I can go and I can apply this. This profile is now going to get tagged to every single photo that comes in. I can of course go and change it later if I want to, but it gets tagged to every single photo that gets brought into Lightroom in this import. And I now, I don't have to think about it. I get a better starting place. I'm done. I don't have to worry about it. And I can continue to just kind of move on and edit my photos. So what I would suggest is if, it, you know, maybe you shoot landscapes and portraits and sports or whatever it happens to be, um, do this for a few of your different photos. And if you change any of the, those settings inside of your camera, this is a way that you can go and figure out what the camera did. But I'd go in here, you could create one for every one of those profiles if you, if you wanted to. And, uh, and then if you ever did change anything in your camera, you'd have a really easy way to go and apply that preset here inside of Lightroom later on. Okay. So probably, you know, I, I hear this one over and over again, and it is, it has plagued me for years and years. You know, you're looking at the photo and you're like, wow, that looks great. And then three seconds later, it doesn't, that's what's going on. And that's how you can get around it. It's actually pretty simple. Once you make that preset, you're only a few seconds away and you don't really have to spend any more time with it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you again real soon.